Thank you, Eva. Thank you, Eva. Uh, I hope you can hear me. Good morning to everybody. I'm uh, wearing uh, two hats today, as Eva has already announced. Uh, one is that of the biochemist who works uh, with Global 2000 since 20 years on pesticides and chemicals. And the other hat is that of a citizen, of a European, that together with other citizens has organized the citizens' initiative, Save Bees and Farmers. Um, which got the support from more than 200 NGOs and 1.8 million Europeans. The goal of our initiative is to uh, preserve and restore biodiversity by reducing the use of pesticides by 80% until 2030 and a complete phase out by 35. Why is this important? It's because um, yeah, in, in 2019, three scientific bodies of the United Nations, the IPCC, the uh, International Panel on Climate Change, the IPBES, the in Integrated Panel on, on uh, Biodiversity and Ecosystem Services, and the Food and Agricultural uh, Organization, FAO, came out with three different reports which had the same message. The message was um, that um, um, we, we have we, we have to um, to change the way we use our land and agriculture is a fundamental part of this uh, if we are to avoid imminent and catastrophic climate disaster and biodiversity collapse and this is really a serious warning and that's why we as organizers of the safe peace and farmers initiative welcome the farm to fork strategy under the green deal and its ambition to initiate a transition to a climate and biodiversity friendly food system. The, the strategy is urgently needed and the use pesticide reduction target of 50% by 2030, although we ask for more, is a very important part of it. We are looking therefore very much, and this is important to say very much, forward to the sustainable use regulation, which aims to make the, the, the target legally binding and should be presented by the European Commission, hopefully in June 22. Having said this, we have now to come to the, to the problem side. The problem with the SUR is that the tool that is proposed to measure the success of member states in reaching uh, the pesticide reduction target, that is uh, so-called harmonized risk indicator one, is not suitable to, to do so. In fact, this indicator is fabricating false results because of two major misconceptions. The first misconception, I think Eva has already mentioned, uh, was documented quite well, one by Pan Europe firstly, and then by the European Court of Auditors, uh, who found that uh, the HI1 is, will, will show you the, 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 the success of pesticide reduction only by banning old pesticides and replacing them by new ones without um, with, with, without eliminating a single spraying. Yeah? And, and this is one of the reasons I think why industry likes this indicator. Uh, but the second weakness of the harmonized risk indicator has not been publicly discussed yet. And it is now explained in a, in a small fact sheet in a five page which is published today. Uh, and it can be described very shortly as the indicator literally points into the wrong direction. And that means if we trust, if the European Union uh, trusts and follows this indicator on its way to pesticide reduction, uh, if then farmers can increase the use of toxic and even the most toxic pesticides authorized, and these are the candidates for substitution, and as long as they reduce the use of the least toxic ones, these are pesticides based on natural substances, which are even permitted in organic farming. As long as they reduce those uh, substances, the indicator will tell us that we are on a good way to reach the target of reducing the risk, as of reducing risk and use of pesticides in the European Union. And this is really a great problem. I will now try to explain very briefly why this is the case. And uh, you can also find, of course, this information uh, in the uh, paper that you will be, uh, be provided with afterwards. And now I try to share 
my screen with you. Yeah, I hope this works. Can you see the screen? Uh, the paper has the title HI1, a risk indicator to promote toxic pesticides, question mark. Um, the subject of pesticide reducements generally would be 453 pesticide active substances that are currently authorized in the European Union. Uh, I checked this yesterday. This is the actual number. The most important, and this is what we normally understand with pesticides, are those 232 synthetic active substances. These are pesticides, for example, like the neonicotinoids, which have been most of them, but not all, banned because of their toxicity to bees or glyphosate, which is currently under discussion again because it's a, 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 a presumed carcinogen by the IARC. And for example, diphenoconazole, which we might not have, have heard of uh, before today. I just put it here because the example will be on this special pesticide. And then you have another group. It's uh, only consisting of 57 natural pesticide active substances. So these are substances from plant, animal, and microbial origin, salts, minerals, sulfur, and copper are prominent examples, but also baking soda is frequently used. Um, and, and baking soda, for example, uh, is something that you eat in your cake. Um, and there, there's another group of biological pesticides. Uh, these are, in fact, living organisms. Most of them, others are horm uh, hormones, pheromones, and they are not really part of the pesticide reduction target. Therefore, we will just leave it away and have a look on this example. It is showing how the harmonized risk indicator works. Comparing baking soda, which is, can be used for uh, fighting fungi, uh, and also diphenconazole for the same thing. And both uh, active substances are, um, are registered in Austria for scab control in apples. And here is the example of what happens if uh, a farmer, a conventional farmer, because this is only possible for them, uses diphenoconazole uh, as it is recommended by the authority. And for example, an organic farmer or another conventional farmer is using baking soda. Um, as you see, um, um, the diphenconazole is, and that's why I use this example, it's even by the commission classified as a candidate for substitution because of its toxicity to water organisms and uh, the persistence of the substance, which is not the case with baking soda. Uh, that's the reason why uh, diphenconazole gets a high weighting factor to, to estimate this risk. It's 16. Or it's not really high, but this is uh, the highest uh, for, for um, authorized substances. Baking soda gets the lowest uh, weighting factor, which you could say it's okay because it's safer. But I think here's maybe the first problem because factor 16 difference does not really, um, as it's not a scientifically based factor, it's just an um, arbitrary decision, a political one. And in, in reality, the difference between the two substances and aquatic toxicity is about 8,000 fold. This is when you take uh, ecotoxicological data and use just quite um, commonly used models to, to estimate the impact. So 8,000 would be maybe the reality. F factor 16 is what the harmless risk indicator is doing. But the major problem comes now. Uh, since the harmonized risk indicator is only using sales data because we do not have in the European Union use data in the moment. Um, so sales data are used and they use only the sales data and combine them with uh, the weighting factor. That leads that to, to, to uh, extreme uh, overestimation of the risk of such substances that are not toxic or much less toxic like baking soda and therefore used in much higher amounts. Baking soda is recommended to be used in 7.5 kilogram on one hectare apple orchard. Can you show you now? This is baking soda just that uh, I have in my, in, in my kitchen. This is about 15 gram and this would be enough for 20 square meters, which is uh, it's quite a lot for, for apple trees. Um, 
if this would be the same amount of defense connoisseur, we would be uh, able to spray 2,000 and more square meters with this. So this shows a little bit the difference. But this is not re uh, considered by this indicator. And therefore, by calculating 16 multiplied with 556, you get to a quite, quite lower partial risk contribution than if you do the same math with baking soda. So what does this tell us, or what does the indicator tell us, is the farmer that used baking soda contributed eight times more to the general environmental risk than the farmer that has used the synthetic pesticide. And it's very interesting, it's, it's some kind of a fun fact, I would say, to see what industry, as so those interest groups who just um, represent those uh, companies like BSF, Bayer, Monsanto, Syngenta, which produce different connoisseurs and get a lot of money uh, from that, to this indicator. They just made a, a comment to the commission in 2019 when it was when it came out. ECPA, it's the European Crop Protection Association, which is it names itself now, I think, Crop Life Europe, says it views the use of the harmonized risk indicator one as a reasonable way to measure the hazard reduction of pesticides used in both organic and conventional agriculture. And yeah, I'm very interested what organic farmers say about this statement. Thanks. Thank you so much, Helmut. Um, I think this is the perfect bridge to the next speaker, um, who is Eric Gall. He's policy manager at IFOM Organics Europe, the European organic movement, who will share organic and organics farmers' perspective on this. Eric, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Well, um, I must say that when we were alerted by Helmut and Global 2000 and uh, by Austria, our members on, in Austria, on uh, how this uh, HRI indicator works, uh, we were pretty shocked because precisely this indicator points in the wrong direction. It gives the impression that organic farming is the problem. But organic farming is precisely a, a system approach that seeks to reduce reliance on external inputs, that seeks to mostly rely on ecological processes uh, to produce food, and which uses as much as possible preventive measures uh, and indirect measures against pests, like crop rotation, for example, or, or flower strips. And indeed, as a last resort, uh, pesticides can be used, uh, but synthetic pesticides are prohibited in organic farming. And the regulation clearly say that uh, only natural substances uh, can be used as pesticides uh, by uh, organic farmer. So Elmut explained this a bit when we talk about natural substances, uh, uh, we mean substances derived from plant or animal origin, microorganisms, mineral compounds, or some semiochemicals like pheromones. Uh, so we are talking about substances which already exist in nature, which are already exist, which already exist in in in, in uh, ecosystems. On the other end, synthetic pesticides uh, they contain active substances which were speci specifically designed by chemists to kill insects and and fungi, and which represent a new introduction uh, into ecosystems. But the point is that, like Enmut explained, um, natural substances are less potent, less effective uh, in a way, and they are often uh, used in higher uh, volumes as well. And this is precisely where the HRI indicator is misleading because it, it is mainly based on assessing the volumes of uh, substances uh, which are uh, sold. And uh, here's the catch. The point is that the quantity is not related uh, to the risks. Uh, to quote Eurostat, there is no absolute relationship between the loading of active substances and the potential threat to the environment and human and animal health. So this is why it's unacceptable for the organic movement uh, to, 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 to accept that the future uh, regulation on pesticides uh, reduction will use such an indicator, which is mainly based on volume, and which gives the wrong impression that organic farming is the, is the problem. And we believe that relaying on such an indicator is ineffective 
to measure real pesticide reduction, but it's, it is also unfair to organic farmers who are precisely the one who are striving uh, to find alternatives to the use of synthetic uh, pesticides uh, as well. And we could see that you know, this indicator was already used in Austria two years ago uh, to attack organic farming. So uh, uh, I, I can understand why the pesticide industry uh, so sounds rather happy uh, about this uh, indicator. So it, it's clearly an issue and it clearly contradicts the European objective in the farm to fork strategy of reaching 25% uh, organic farming by 2030. But there are good news. The good news is that there are already uh, existing indicators which are used in some member states that correct this volume effect, which are more suitable and which do not create this bias against natural substances. One example, for example, is one example is the no-do indicator, which is implemented in, in France. We will also publish a briefing uh, about it uh, in a few minutes, so you will get all the details. But it's, uh, it's an indicator um, which is called the number of doses per unit, which takes into account the area treated by the substances in question. Rather than the area treated, it takes into account um, uh, the, the area of a crop under cultivation for which this substance is authorized. Because as you know, we do not have yet in the European Union reliable data on pesticide use. But the point is that we have existing indicator which use existing data, which is data on pesticide sales that we have, and which give a, a, a more realistic uh, um, uh, view of, of uh, um, the use and risk of pesticide. So this French indicator is just an example. There are other uh, indicators implemented at the national level, but the point is that you know it is possible to get uh, the right indicator uh, and, an, uh, and a less biased indicator in the upcoming uh, SOAR proposal. This issue is easy to fix, so we do expect uh, the Commission uh, to fix this issue of indicator and to not use the HR1 indicator in the upcoming uh, SOAR proposal and to instead use an indicator that corrects uh, this uh, volume effects. Thank you. Thank you very much, Eric. That was very insightful. Um, so finally, you'll hear from Dr. Martin Nernin, Health and Environment uh, Policy Officer at Pan Europe, which is a network of NGOs working to reduce the use of hazardous pesticides and have them replaced with ecologically sound initiatives. Um, Martin will provide us with his organization's view on the file. Martin, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Eva. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, I will give you a little bit of background information on, on uh, why we have these so bad uh, harmonized risk indicators. So they were part of the um, Directive on the Sustainable Use of Pesticides that was adopted in 2009 in the EU. The aim of this directive was to reduce the use of pesticides in order to protect people's health and the environment, while allowing farmers to become more independent from uh, chemistry. Uh, the red reduction in pesticide use was meant to take place through the use of um, so-called implemented, uh, integrated, sorry, integrated pest management. Um, Eric Gall has mentioned uh, the fact that it is made more mainly based on preventative measures and non-chemical pest control uh, and that the use of biopesticides or pesticides has to be used uh, as the last resort. And in order to monitor the evolution of pesticide use, the, this directive uh, has foreseen the, the development of indicators at EU level, but no deadline was fixed. So since 2000, 2009, member states uh, took advantage of this lack of deadline in the law to keep postponing the, the, the establishment of these indicators. Um, and in the end, it took a decade to, to produce them. So only in 2019 were they published. And uh, the reason why we consider it is so weak, the reason uh, is that it was developed by um, and discussed and agreed upon by 
uh, agri the ministries of agriculture from the member states, which are uh, in most member states historically uh, in favor of um, of conventional farming and the use of uh, pesticides, and they try to prevent any positive evolution in terms of uh, pesticide reduction. And to be noted that in this file, the European Parliament was not involved at all, um, which in our view is a lack of, uh, uh, there was a lack of proper public and democratic debate. So Pan-Europe has been criticizing these uh, indicators since the beginning, as we consider they are not appropriate to properly monitor the real evolution of the risk and the use of pesticides in the EU. So we fully support the, the analysis uh, made by our colleagues from uh, Global 2000 today. And furthermore, we wanted also to highlight that the, the current indicators do not take into account environmental toxicity of pesticides, only the human toxicity, and that they also do not include the enormous number of derogations provided by member states every year to banned substances like neonicotinoids. So this topic now today is of very uh, great importance because it is uh, these in indicators will allow to monitor um, the, the, the objectives of the EU Green Deal to reduce the use and risk of pesticides by 50% until 2030. Um, and uh, as we regularly hear, and today again, we, we heard that there was a political push from some member states to postpone the discussion on the sustainable use of pesticides regulation, but we, we do not agree. We think the Commission has to stand firm and publish on the 22nd of June, as it is foreseen, the uh, draft regulation on the sustainable use of pesticides together with the nature restoration law. And we ask the Commission as well to open the debate on a revision of these indicators, otherwise we will never make it towards a, a more, sustain, more sustainable agriculture. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, Martin. Um, thank you also to all the speakers. I'm happy to open the floor to journalists' questions now. Um, I see that Michael already um, raised his hand, so I'll give the floor to him. Um, when you open your microphone, um, and maybe your video, which is always nice. Uh, please remember to start by saying who you are and who you work for. It's always nice to know. Thank you. Hello, good morning. Picture, uh, video and sound should be um, uh, functional. I'm Michael Loma.